Hello there, and welcome to Star Wipes. That's right, it's the R Editor's Podcast. My name's Jeff Greenberg. I'm also known as Greenies Mac. I'm the lead mod there. I'm a post-production consultant. With me, as always, is my good friend, Michael Thomas. Hello, Jeff, and hello, everyone in our editors. Yeah, and hopefully at some point we'll, we'll get some people outside of uh, our editors for this. Uh, we did a pilot. We're now taking that pilot to the next step as we talk about the editor's subreddit of Reddit itself. And we're two post people. You have got creative technologists there. You're also the host of the amazing channel uh, called Five Things. What's, by the way, what's up next for Five Things? Since I have you here on the spot, I happen to have a little bit of downtime right now, believe it or not. So I'm working on the uh, next episode of Five Things. A uh, little insider news. It's going to be uh, how to edit remotely with Premiere Pro. Uh, and it's going to cover things like Teams and productions and virtualizing in the cloud and remoting into a system uh, and hybrids and tools you can use and, and things that have really proven themselves uh, over the past few years because of the pandemic. So I'm hoping that's going to drop uh, in a couple weeks, so sometime in uh, mid to late August. I'm, I'm excited to see it. Uh, I've we It's shown up so much on editors, uh, five things. There's all sorts of things. I think NAS is, uh, and group storage is one of the bigger ones. Um, editors, for those of you who may be new to the subreddit or new to Reddit, it's a free forum here. And basically, you can vote stuff up and down. I'm pretty tight about how much moderation I do. I over-moderate. I openly admit it and don't care. But it keeps the conversation, the signal to noise ratio decent. And because I believe you either understand the Reddit or now you hopefully understand the Reddit, in the same sense, I want to talk to you about what we're going to be doing across this. We're right now uh, introducing this format. At the end, we're doing an FMK. I'll leave you to Google what that was. Uh, we're gonna keep that a secret till the end. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take apart two threads, sometimes it might be more, and then we're gonna do a series of, we're, we're not sure what to call it yet, but we're gonna look at a group of threads and do quick back and forth. Um, I think the biggest problem we have, Michael, is both you and I are post-production perfectionists. Uh, you could call it perfectionist. You'd call it pain in the ass. Uh, but, you know, there's a reason I don't do production because uh, I'm too much a perfectionist and thus post made sense. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so with you. And it's probably why Five Things takes as long and looks so good is that both of us have that sort of uh, credo in it. I'm sure I'm making mistakes here. I'm sure people will let us know those mistakes. Thank you. Um, I really, when they suggest in the the, the subreddit, Star Wipes. I really wanted to do that Wonder Woman 1977 opening. I looked for it as a, a template. I couldn't find it. I was going to buy it. And I would ask the, the community, but we, of course, have that rule not to ask for free work. Uh, are you any good with After Effects, Michael? Uh, there's a reason I talk on stage and uh, I'm not in front of a, a computer uh, jockeying keyframes daily. So uh, that probably would not be something I would uh, have a lot of skill in. I, I know that feeling. I learned from the the woman back in the day, a woman by the name of Trish Myers, uh, wrote Creating Motion Graphics. I learned in person in a classroom and I realized I'm not a graphic designer. I'm a mm -hmm. hack, but uh, I do some decent compositing day in, on, on some days. Uh, I'd like to go ahead here and start taking a look. We've got two that we're talking about today, and let's talk about this first one. <gasps> Is working in reality TV good and fun? And just so we hear it, uh, I'll give a summary, summation here. I've recently started working as one of Australia's biggest news stations. It's fun. The hours aren't great. great and the environment's a little topic. I might have a chance to jump shift and become an offline editor or post for one of the biggest reality TV production houses. I was hoping I could hear experiences you all have had. Doesn't need to be Australian. If anyone can give an example of day-to-day -day might look like for an offline editor or post, that'd be help. Thanks in advance. That is a big question. This one's yours, by the way. Not that I think we we go back and forth. We have a pre-discussion. Um, first, what? What thoughts do you have? And then let's start breaking apart the thread here a little. 
I think I'd like to do it actually the other way, because I think some folks have said it more eloquently than I probably could. Uh, I love the response by Big Jubaka. And I, I want to know the story behind that name. That's a, a great name. But I think often um, in threads, whether it be Reddit or some other forum, there's always the uh, things are black and white, right? This software sucks. This OS sucks. This job sucks. Or or this is perfect. This NLE is perfect. This OS is perfect. And no, we the world is not black and white. There's a lot of gray, just like my shirt. And I think Big Jubaka did a great job of saying uh, it can be good here are the things you need to take in consideration, you know, things like work life balance, uh, being aware that if you do it for long enough, uh, it, you know, you could be pigeonholed as working, uh, just on reality. Uh, and I think the, the, the way, uh, big Jubak describes it is fantastic. It's about a third of the way down. I recommend anyone, uh, check that out. Um, what I have seen, uh, in my last 15 years or so here in Hollywood is that reality, uh, is, uh, and it, it, Oddly enough, reality and then adult entertainment are usually the places where you start uh, because you need a ton of loggers. You, you're, you're inundated with so much footage and you can learn on the job, so to speak, especially when it comes to logging. Um, and so I find a lot of people start there and then end up getting pigeonholed because they're, they'll try to apply for something that's scripted or feature and, um, well, you don't have any of that experience. Try and branch out. The the nightmare in both of those industries, but particularly in reality, is that it's just a, a ton of footage and insanely short deadlines for those footage for that footage. Um, the big Jubaka one here is you know the idea that you really do need to visualize your career. I I'm going to go ahead here and take a look at the very very top part of this thread because that's wait much further down than I thought it was going to be. I had a search for Baca, by the way. <laughs> uh, that very top choice. Let's take a look at that. By the way, I love the fact that you're still rocking the old uh, Reddit interface. It, it's just easier for me to read. Uh, I know that we're supposed to be technologists and you know embrace the new, but you know some things just work and there's no reason to change them. Uh, I... I I agree. The funny thing is, is that Reddit's trying to get everybody to switch to the newer interface purely because it works better on mobile. I don't know. I try not to have an opinion. All the plugins and stuff I need to do to moderate work better under old. In the meantime, uh, Yoho Matey. I wonder what that's uh, in reference to, Michael. Uh, I've worked shows where editors work nine to 10 hour days Cuts get done, everyone's happy. I've worked shows where they're there at eight, stay till midnight, and they're three weeks behind schedule and the EP is flipping out. My last show was 11 months. This is insane, normal six to eight. We had a spaced out schedule. The lead editor was burning out. And I think it's in large part because the EP wanted him to finish every episode, which in a run like that's long. Now they're talking about ITV, which means that uh, I'm assuming it's not the US. Uh, I'm assuming it's the I, UK. He does have uh, 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 unscripted being done in the US. There, There is an office. Uh, I'm not sure how much, but yeah, ITV certainly does work in the States as well. Speaking of which, I Steal Your Newspapers has some very marked thoughts about, uh, about ITV. And on that note, I will say, obviously, this is not for children, although Michael and I will try and keep the swearing to a minimum. Uh, I'm a Philadelphian and there was a group there called Banyan that used to do like a bucket of those baby story, wedding story stuff. And they, they would chew up a lot of editors. I think that reality TV has a lot of tendency to just chew up people's souls. Agreed. Uh, and it would be, you know, I, I don't know whether... And uh, Bob's your uncle brings this up in the thread. I don't know, you know, whether it's unionization that needs it. I don't know whether it's that you've got to be that that's safer to you inside the union, but so few of those sort of productions are union based. This is a grind and they're clearly using and abusing a lot of people. 
There are, there are some unscri uh, unscripted places um, uh, in L.A. that are great. Uh, Buna Murray is, is one of them. Uh, Mark Radonis, who, who recently retired after decades, he was actually one of the uh, original editors on The Real World, the original Real World. And I know that, that under him, uh, uh, Buna Murray flourished and folks loved working for him. Uh, so I think it really obviously comes down to the production house. I think uh, uh, a lot of uh, unscripted places... Uh, they may not own the footage. They may not own uh, 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 what, what's being recorded. And thus, you know, it changes the, the dynamic there. And I think Bunim and some, uh, owned a majority, if not all of their stuff. So that changes it. But I think it really comes down to leadership and management. But you are right with uh, unscripted. Um, there seems to be, uh, uh, I don't want to call it inappropriate, but uh, it seems to churn younger creatives than faster than just about any other niche uh, in the film and, and television industry. I, I don't disagree with you on that. And, you know, interestingly, N8 the Great, 91, his answer was just no. Just, how is it? No. And Sprizzle says the same sort of thing that Jubaka said, reality is a great place to start, but it was definitely, definitely a sentiment when I was working. The sooner you get into a different field, the better. You know, I, I have seen that a little bit in some of the sports out there as well. And sports, and I, I mean the daily grind sports, not the, hey, we've got 10 games a year sports. The, we have 180 games, you know, because there's got, with double headers, and I'll let you draw those inferences. I don't think that's too hard. Um I almost wish at some level with these across the board, you had a chance to interview people on their way out when you would go to like look for a job. Because what you're always looking for, I think, is to avoid the toxic companies. Mm -hmm. And I, I find that a lot of the people around live TV have a lot of yelling history where, and I don't know how much of it bleeds in, I know that if I was going to staff up a production for reality where I knew there was going to be a lot of churn, I would probably lean towards reality produ uh, live producers over non-live producers. I found live people yell more than I like. Do you have uh, any thoughts on that, my friend? I, I think that's been rampant in the industry for a while. I mean, we, uh, we've heard even moving up to feature films, right? Uh, uh, producers, directors just screaming and yelling and, and making lives hell for the, the talent. And I think that was accepted for quite a while because it's part of the process, right? And, and I think that's trickled down to maybe some, you know, aging producers just were. Uh, now I think we're realizing with, with funny bringing mental health and, and work-life balance and, and having a, a, uh, 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 a, I hate to use the word family, but a more comfortable working environment that nurtures mental health. I think now that that is, is, is really becoming paramount with some of these uh, newer production companies that the whole yelling and ranting will be gone, will be rooted out as those folks retire. I'm hopeful that that will continue. I'm not hopeful that it will continue. I, I think that we see from top to bottom, I, I don't mean to be a cynic, but I, I see top to bottom, I still see bad behavior. It's harder to hide, but it's still there. And you know, if you look at Voodoo Scuba's you know, item here, I actually hosted a show. I made more money than just about everyone and it's still blank blank. Um, you know, that, that to me is always that, that pain point that I think the pyramid of on versus off talent, you know, is very much a lot like it is in a kitchen, in a restaurant where the frontline people make more than the backline and the owner, the producer still takes a clean bit of money. I also feel that, uh, Mamini Mini here. As long as it's just not a show like Hoarders, where you go through hours of garbage, you should be fine. Uh, I have something I always kind of point out whenever I see Hoarders mentioned. In no other place do I know of a reality show that literally exploits people's mental illness. If we had a show called Alcoholics or Addicts, and I mean, they tried to do it with Remember celebrities. Dr. Drew? Dr. Drew had the show where it's cele like celebrity rehab. And that, that was, I just... No, I, I, I but couldn't. hoarders, at least the celebrities still had something to be as semi-celebrity for or 
But the people on hoarders have not like, well, they have too much is generally the problem. Um, let's let's take a back look at the Reddit. Uh, long form television, the most boring. They'll just have a Bible you copy and paste. No room for creativity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I don't I, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm going to step in on that. Uh, I have a really close friend that worked on several reality shows. And uh, once he had been there for a year. Uh, in it was actually for a very high profile cooking show. We'll leave it at that. And it was, well, this is what we've recorded. This is what we've seen for the first couple of days of dailies. Um, how do you want to orchestrate this? What do you want to orchestrate as the arc in the middle of the season? What do you want to orchestrate as uh, uh, the the what's going to be sexy the, the first episode, right? So the 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 uh, assistants and and the editors who have seen that are able to go to the producer and say, I'm seeing this. We already have this footage. We can structure this. We can move this here. So uh, I think it probably comes down to the environment you're working in. But for to say the editors or, or assistants don't have a say in how things are going, uh, that sounds like a, a, a producer that uh, is afraid for their job. But I, I think any healthy environment would, would allow that. I, I think, you know, that's one of the major constraints in a lot of repeated episodic shows is the amount of freedom you have is there, but it's under constraints generally speaking yeah you're following a recipe i i was a huge fan of house and it was almost tragic how predictable the show was and yet the writing and the structure i think was amazing and they broke out that structure once they relied on it too much i think reality has some of that hangers because people each week are coming in for the same thing. You know, Big Brother, we're expecting to see fights and secrecy. We're expecting this in those constraints. I would also point out that Bob's your uncle here said it's the opposite of my experience. I've worked on a lot of long form doc series. Um, and he talks about paper edits, missing all the work that we just used through B-roll. He talks about Verite and all he wanted to do was edit fiction content, but he realized how much power the editor does. And often the editor in documentaries get credited as a, uh, a story and sometimes a co-producer slash um, uh, uh, director because of how much the editors bring in those sort of places. Uh, take a look through the rest of the thread here and see if there's something you know you think that that's worth bringing some extra attention to. I'm just gonna cover a couple more of the top level items. We're only about halfway through the thread. Well, that brings up, you know, our next piece here. So many posts from people trying to edit with the wrong codec. A lot of what I think you and I are trying to do is pick different sides of the coin of post-production. So we're not just talking business. We're not just talking balance of life. This thread, and I let this one go. Um, so many posts from people trying to edit with the wrong codec. Please read this article. It should help those of you struggling with your media and premiere. Premiere gets that call out. In most cases, it's not the NLV, it's the codec you're trying to edit with. Wow. Wow, did this I, one was like fire. I, I have a couple things I have to I have to bring up on this because as much as I work with the you know uh, predominant NLEs and creative tools on a daily basis on the on the you know corporate level, um, all of them get an F because all of them uh, have uh, at one point in their future, or one point in their past said, you can edit natively. And that was marketing. And that's a big problem we have in the industry is, is marketing is so unregulated here in the US as, as opposed to it is overseas and elsewhere, is that there was the, uh, oh, I could just edit whatever, right? So Avid had the AMA, remember back when they, they had AMA, you can edit natively. I was right? there day zero. Okay. Final Cut was, you can uh, look at, we can do 10 streams of, of uh, H.264. And, and uh, of course, Premiere was like, you can just link to files, unlike Avid, where you have to import. Um, and it, it was just ran rampant. And so folks got used to that. And, and I think we're all guilty of this to, to some degree, is that over the past couple of years, our attention spans have gotten lower, right? We love to tick and scroll and get that uh, hit of dopamine, and then move on. Uh, so on, I know you're accustomed to working fast and instantly and getting to that instant gratification. No, you need to look at 
and offline online workflow or transcoding and, and what the transcoding means and what the time impact is. People don't want to hear that. Uh, and I, I think those two things just make the rush to edit natively um, uh, the easy thing to do. And you then get so far bogged down, you then come to our editors as you should, and you get all of the input here. And from a technical perspective, uh, Smushcan, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, Smushcan has been on the forum for quite a while. And Smushcan uh, has always had a ton of great technical insights. And, and I'm a big fan of, of objective versus subjective when it comes to technical things. And what uh, Smushcan outlines is uh, inner frame versus intra frame codecs that are uh, non-long GOP, codecs that are long GOP, things to avoid. Uh, I highly recommend you, you check out that post uh, because it's a good starting point. Uh, so you have to laugh when you were talking about the short attention span. I made it a point to go through all the angles just for the hell of it. I don't know if you caught it. Uh, okay, so a couple items here. One, I got to tell you, I read the article and I love Pro Video Coalition. I write on occasion for Pro Video Coalition. Uh, I'm a little less than agreement with what the author there says. And he ends up at the end going, oh yeah, but you could, you should. I, I absolutely do H.264 editing. He does some H.264 of sub 1080 work or 1080 based work. Um, Tickle Hater, one of my mod team, and I don't wanna say I own them. These are all volunteers. They are all wonderful people. Uh, I and a bunch of them have contributed to the wiki every now and again when I have all that all that free time, you know, man. Uh, I on occasion will go through and rewrite or improve because like other people, I'm just trying to create less work, although I moderate. I'm, I mean, you should see the moderation stats. stats that are awful. Um, but this, our wiki across the board here has got phenomenal resources. Uh, and sometimes I've cribbed stuff from Schmushkan or Evil's Day Star, somebody else's work. But a lot of time it's my mod team, like Tickle Hater, who's written this. Uh, I think this piece here uh, about, I know there's not a lot of for Avid here, and I have my own issues, but there's something to said how it forces you to confront certain workflow problems. And I think that's dead on that if we didn't, if we didn't have to, if the time it took to transcode wasn't an issue, if the size of footage wasn't an issue, we would just go, hey, convert everything to DNX or ProRes, and then and only then should you be editing. I think that's generally the world's advice. And I think Adobe was just trying to go, our tool is much more flexible than our competition that got us all down this awful steaming pile of mess of let's try and edit flash video, let's try and edit the DVD. Avid, of course, because they have that tape background, you know, they don't make it easy. And I think we can all be in agreement that one of the worst, most painful dialogue boxes in the world is the Avid Reconnect Media dialogue box. Can, 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 can we agree that that one's pretty awful? It's, it's simultaneously the most powerful device, as well as being the most complicated and easy to mess up. You know, interestingly here, Breaking a Blind Sight says, I don't care what anyone says, Avid is king, I love it. The only thing that pisses me off is they don't sell t-shirts so I can show my nerd love. I mean, I love that. I think I have a couple, in fact, not only did I have a couple of Avid t-shirts, I went to a couple of road shows, back when, you know, road shows would happen. And at the end of the road show, because I knew the people as a, as a Avid, as an ACI, as a master ACI, train the trainer, um, they would sometimes go, do you want these extra shirts so we don't have to ship them back? And I think for a while, like, my wife and I had like 20 different like Avid shirts that, you know, were just sleepwear in our house. It was great. Avid does have shirts. I still have them hanging in my closet uh, from previous uh, jobs, employers, gigs. Uh, uh, reach out to Chris Bove, uh, if I'm pronouncing Chris's name right. He's a phenomenal person, or, Mar or Marianne at Avid. If you can't get a hold of them, message me and I'll get you in touch. I'm sure we can, I'm sure I can help wrangle you in an Avid shirt. Now, it may be the old purple one, 
right? The old, pur- the old purple angled logo without the play button, but, but we'll, we'll find a way to get you a shirt. Wow. Wow. I'm not going to get into that one. I, was, uh, I, I think, I think I can pull those strings. Hey, listen, uh, I love Chris. I love Marianne. I love, I love the people. I love Avid in general. I love all these tools. I hate all these tools. I think we all have those days where they're good and bad. Um, and here, Manny Moni, who was mentioned before, who said there isn't love? I love Avid. Can't tell you how many times I heard, and I'm going to say this on camera, I can't export my final timeline in Premiere. I don't know why. Help. Man, um, I think our mod team, I think in general, we don't let it just become a quagmire of tech support. In fact, I kind of, you'll, you'll find, Michael, every now and again, I'll go, hey, you should contact whatever the name of the manufacturer is because they have people whose jobs it is to help, even if they're not always as helpful as we would like and can't always solve the problem. Uh, but I would almost, I don't want to say, I would say 99% of the problems we see running into are because of H.264 and whether it's because of the way the file was encoded or the way that hardware decoding gets involved to lower the stress on the CPU, it's kind of ugly in general. You know what I'd like? I'd like there to be some automated decision tree uh, that we could build. Like uh, there's one that's done for uh, uh, how to select the right noise removal tool, right? You know, if we if you listen to your audio, it then uh, you then say, well, is it muffled? Is, is there echo? Is there reverb? And it, it, it tells you. I almost want there to be something like that that someone creates for NLE problems. So my footage is stuttery. Okay, is the footage VFR? Yes, transcode it. No, it's not VFR. Okay, go ahead. L- legit. I've had that conversation at least four times, okay, in person with the product owner, and I'm not naming names of products or product owners, but literally I said, hey, I give the footage to the system. Immediately, it should sniff the footage, and I don't care if it's Microsoft Clippy that comes up and goes, hey, it looks like you have VFR footage. Have you thought about transcoding this? I would kill for these tools to intelligently make me Bruce aware. The yak. Bruce the Yak makes a comeback and he looks at you, his eyes get big. You look like you need to transcode your footage. I'd like uh, that. I, I would love that. Hey, let's let's look at endless summer burn here. I'm moving to resolve. Premiere is way too buggy. And this is the line I love, Michael. And all the YouTubers I watch are moving to. And the next person says, and then they all ask the same questions, problems on our DaVinci Resolve. Um, you know, interestingly, I am I saw something really, and it's something like one of those rules I kind of have around editors is not to be a jerk. Somebody in the thread, and I don't want to, again, I'm not throwing them under a bus or anything, but they give some negative feedback to our DaVinci Resolve. I think it's a great subreddit. I think it's hard in this field where there's a lot of button pushing to not talk about button pushing, but talk about it enough. And editors has it, but it's one of the things about editors that I, you know, I try. Kitschy guy, by the way, in here will mention oh, it. But I love, I love, I love their input. They're, they're uh, again, the, it, by the way, if you're out there with nothing to do, I'm happy to teach you how to join our mod team to take some of the, the, the work off of me. And it's mostly because I'm obsessive or I get bored or short attention span. Um, but kitschy guy goes, resolve is a beast for color workflows. And Michael, most of the people I know using media composer or a lot of them using other tools will pass stuff through Resolve just because it's such a good transcoding tool. Uh, th- th- that uh, and the Symphony feature set that Avid has, which uh, give you secondary color correction and a handful of other things, that was the 800 pound gorilla in terms of finishing uh, until Resolve uh, was purchased, obviously, uh, uh, by Black Magic. Um, that's when uh, that Premiere, uh, excuse me, Resolve started making complete inroads. And I don't think I've ever seen a software take over uh, such a section of the industry so quickly. Um, then I think that may, this may play into a question we're going to uh, discuss later. Well, so much of that at every level, 
has to do with the fact that they, and I, I know the person who did it or, or advocated for it, but that they went with the lost leader model is just, let's give it away and put it in the forefront. And they have done a great job of making that a super accessible tool. And I feel their paywall isn't horrendous. Like, yeah, when you get to this point, but if you get to that point, you're a professional anyway. I and it's, and it's one time cost. It's one right? so it's far. Subscription model. It's uh, there's always that battle. Uh, I did a talk. I did a talk about a year ago, Michael, called um, uh, "Death by a Thousand Cuts: How to Live a Subscription Free Life," and I went through all different ways to avoid buying into subscriptions. Uh, back on the subreddit. CMM edit, uh, one of my favorite people said, you know, with lots of sarcasm, but my computer costs a lot. It should play fine because the camera gave us H.264s and a smack of no. Um, <sighs> gaming systems. Ga first, what's expensive is very much life subjective. Um, if I'm working for a group and they've got a bunch of $10,000 rigs, my idea of expensive is much different than the person that's working with their phone as their primary camera. And they both might tell fantastic stories. It's not the storytelling here, it's just what our perception is of expensive. No, I, I, I would certainly agree. I think one of the things we need to keep in mind is that um, if you're shooting something with your phone and editing on your phone, that's purpose built. If you're shooting something on your phone and then trying to do uh, things that your phone isn't meant to do in terms of editing and you bring it into a uh, full-fledged NLE uh, or compositing uh, uh, software, it's going to be more difficult because it's not built as a point-and-shoot and, shoot and uh, export. So folks just have to realize that you know with, with more features uh, comes more difficulty and you got to know what you're doing. Great power comes great responsibility. I, th I think that's Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? Um, we cannot do one of these. I'm not purposely doing it, but Bob Zellin, who uh, I have that, that he, he's an amazing uh, direct connection for people. He, he doesn't uh, try to be polite, and sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad. But I am going to read this verbatim just because this one's nice. Don't worry, later today or tomorrow, we'll see another post right here with someone saying, how come I'm getting stuttering playback in Premiere from my GoPro and DJI drone footage? A good portion of the questions people come here, never do a search, not even a Google search, look anything up, just, I need a computer for editing. What should I get? I need an editing program. It makes you not want to participate when you see crap like this. And he then he follows himself up with a reply. I got an editor who's got a QNAP set wrong. I can't even edit with Final Cut, what it codec, and it's H.264. The Mac should be able to do this without me being able to transcode. So we got really two things here. We've got Bob, who... Uh, has been known in the industry for years, by the way. If you ever meet him in person, you will find him not to be like this. Uh, you know, whatever this is. But I think he nails a certain part. Did you know, Michael, I have a rejection reason here on the subreddit that says, hey, could you search a little, please, before, you know, before we give up? And... 98% of the time, the person searches and goes, yep, yep, I found what I was looking for. Do you think that there is some item in general when we go to something like editors where people have a reluctance to dig through what's there already? This is going to be a very unpopular opinion, and I, I'm not trying to sound like a like an old person or back in my day, because back in my day wasn't fun either. Uh, but over the years, I've gone to different user groups. I've gone to different colleges, different schools for different events, you know, uh, uh, training, that kind of thing. And, and uh, I've made it a point over the past 10 or 15 years, uh, is certainly the last decade, to say, you know, when I was in school, you know, uh, I would go about searching uh, for books or magazines or things online. Have you found over the years that that's changed? And every year it's been, even with some of the younger teachers, 
yeah, folks don't seem to want to learn the basis of things. They want to lo- learn the answer. Uh, and that could go back to the aforementioned, you know, attention span where I, you know, I, I, I don't want to, I want to create, I don't worry about tech and okay, that's, that's your prerogative. Great. Go do production, you know, but, uh, I, I think there is that th- the world is almost too big. The ocean is too big. There's too much to know. I just want this one answer because then I can get to do the way I was going. And I think I had to take a step back and, and kind of learn the ecosystem and, and that would help me in the future. Uh, so I'm not calling out folks who are younger. I'm just saying there, there tends to be a, a movement now to look for, uh, uh, to, to win the battle, not the war. I, I think that that's a pretty good summation. Uh, I'll, I call it, you know, just in time information. Uh, not that that's any, or just in time training because I do a lot of education and the the struggle is, and we got I got one over on video editing. The hobby side of it was like, how do I learn to do this sort of work? And I and I turned and I said, this takes years. This is like fifteen different skills here. And the thing that I I make the equivalence to is woodworking or playing an instrument. Where yep, you can learn the notes, but that doesn't make you a musician. And guess what? I think the same thing about Google. And Google is so good at getting off and close. I feel lucky is the response. The the struggle I have is is when does it go wrong and how do you search smarter and better with that, you know, sort of piece that we all have that fake confidence that we know how to use it well, that I can find the information really, really well. I just want to take a quick look to see if there's anything we're missing here in the thread. I just want to look at one or two before we figure out what we're going to call traffic or drive-bys. So let's just take a quick look. Dear editors, charge your clients per hour of footage to transcode to ProRes on ingest. Everybody wins. Yeah, clients are going to pay for that. We do get that. On I pad that. Pad that, either pad it into your the hours or, or uh, uh, label it as media prep or something else and charge a lower rate for it. I love this one here. I do wonder about how Premier Stability complaints are related to this. Even older, modest hardware with the right codex make Premier very reliable. Huh. Kind of funny how that's there. Uh, oh, I like Stixy on this one. Please say this in one of the videographer Facebook groups. You'll get absolutely blanked on. People don't want to hear the truth. Ah. (laughs) Uh, Here's a wonderful codec comparison chart. Can somebody tell me where I can find the list of all codecs? And oh my God, Um, there's Schmushkan, by the way, with a great answer. That was the post I was referring, the reply I was referring to. Um, I I will tell you that... (laughs) I, I, I do a wonderful compression workshop. Sometimes it's an eight hour workshop and people go, couldn't you make it shorter? I go, it used to be a week. And I have the three hour version and they go, couldn't it be shorter? And I go, sure, it used to be eight hours. And I do a, a, a 75 minute or 45 minute version. I go, it used to be three hours. It's really, they're like three you need to care about. And it's really ProRes and DNX crappy camera codecs like H2 or distribution codecs H264, H265, and then whatever your camera really is shooting at the raw level. And it's not that this isn't simplifying it, but I'm simplifying it with great, great... um, Prejudice? Great prejudice. There we go. (laughs) Um, Marty, just to chime in, Marty's CH85... It's still after 15 years, can't handle certain codecs. It shouldn't let you import them. Yeah, I'm sure that'll go over well. Yeah, no. Uh, I've seen this become a real problem for the new generation of editors, which have only grown up using Premiere and faster machines. It's only going to get worse as, you know, 6K cell phones one day come out in HDR. And uh, I think this is a really great place to wrap this concept with Wake Jedi. Whoa, whoa, are you telling me I can't end the edit 4K MP4s on my Best Buy laptop? I, I wish that person had said Chromebook. I really wish. <laughs> um, I will call the attention for those of you who are not familiar with this at Reddit. This slash S means with sarcasm. Means with sarcasm. 
Uh, and I say that just so uh, nobody's out there being mean or rude. Uh, so I think that was a really great pair that we did there. And I believe that brings us to uh, what I'm right now calling our divider. We don't have a good name for a divider. It should really be called the Star Wipe Divider. Proto Star Wipe, absolutely Proto Star Wipe. <laughs> and now we get to an interesting section. You know, there, there's, uh, so, so we don't have a name for this section yet. Uh, we, we're trying drive-bys. We're trying traffic. Um, I wish we had. I used to have. I, I used to have a boss and uh, uh, love the guy. Great friends today, but he would just walk by our office and poke his head in. We should do blah blah blah, and he would expect it to be done in two hours, and actually it takes two days. Uh, but we got to be known around the building as drive-bys because he would do that to everyone. So this is why this portion reminds me of that because it's you and I giving input on popular posts quickly and efficiently. In fact, we, we did the pilot. We, we had the same criticisms that we heard back from people. We'd like you to dig apart some threads, but we also want to hear about more threads. So this concept is really, we picked a bunch of them. We're going to do quick little bites of the threads so we see a lot more threads than the two we picked apart. Uh, and in the commercial break that we don't have, but one day I hope we have commercial breaks here, you brought up the fact of how I attack this. So I'm using uh, old Reddit. You, so are you. That's old.reddit.com slash our editors. And then I do two sorts when I go to think about the material for the past week. And, you know, maybe I should bring this up and actually just do do it so people can see. Show the audience at home. God, God, that's true. So here it is, and I'll have to come back to this, but I'm going to editors. I've clicked on the name editors, and it's going to bring up the actual, at this minute, live, what's going on on the subreddit. And when I go to pick topics, I start with top. And it's going to take a moment for it to load top. And I'm looking at the past week, although I can choose other times. I use that. And then I use controversial as well to kind of see what's going on, good and bad. You, Michael, pointed out something that I think is, is kind of fascinating also, not exactly, not true. You see probably half the time that I ever have read it up, I have it set up by new. Um, well, you have it set up by top. When I go into each individual thread, uh, because like you, I spend too much time on here, uh, often I want to see what I've missed. And normally when you go to the... the uh, 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 the redditors, the r slash editors front page, you'll see 20 comments, five new, right? So when I click on it, I want to see the new ones first. So I organize and sort by new. But uh, I gather that when you're doing it, you're sorting by top. Uh, it's a variety of choices during a variety of times. And uh, just the short insight is, I look at all the subreddits I moderate by new, and my job is to turn blue links purple. That's one. I'm coming back and I'm leaving a tab usually open on my system of something I'm following or I'm interested in and occasionally saving it. And I don't go back and revisit stuff as often as I would like because I have three kids and life's a juggle and everything that goes with it. But I'm probably on the subreddits plural. I'm probably on them as a moderator probably 10 times a day would be my guess for three minutes, four minutes, just allowing, rejecting stuff. And then as a reader, probably twice a day, actually reading and looking at the comments because I try to throw something into the conversations when I can. I do look at stuff though in a specific thread generally by top because it's i think actually by hot because it's what's floating to the top and that's a lot of why reddit's vote system works okay um i would like to get us to our rapid fire drive-bys whatever we're going to call it please write in comments if you have ideas for what we should call this number one would you include an award nomination to your resume Yes. Do, do we really I mean, have the to? The other question is, why wouldn't you? Uh, I've seen people put like 
uh, obscure film festival <laughs> nominations on the resume. Yeah, if if you get nominated, and if you've won, absolutely. I think that one's done. Headphone recommendations. Which ones do you use? And you, you recused yourself from this. You said, uh, you didn't. Listen, I respect the fact that you're teaching people or mentioning like what near field is. And you wanted to recuse yourself from this. Michael, what headphone are you using, please? I. I have a pair of, so when I use headphones and I don't have to, I have a wonderful office here that uh, I, I don't need to. Uh, it's an old pair of Sony cans. And uh, there were, I think, $300 at the time. They're the only ones I could use that didn't uh, give me ear fatigue. I don't think they make them anymore, which is why I'm not gonna try and get their part number and, and, and share it. I have a pair of Sennheiser 6XXs because I went to my I work for a full-time audio living, and if you're going to try and do any mixing whatsoever in headphones, which you shouldn't, you better have open backs. I have closed back crappy headphones for, but if I'm trying to monitor, and I'm not using the monitors in my office because my children are trying to sleep, I'm, I'm in the Sennheisers. And the number one answer here, by the way, with all of nine votes, was the Sony MDR 6, 7506s. Um, Hey, that's great. That's the function of this thread. Clip and move on. Scope creep, slow climb fleet feedback and flat fee projects. Hey, don't do flat fee projects. If you do flat fee projects, you set milestones, you set dates, and if there's any deviation, that's billable. So if it starts to creep, you have a flag that says, hey, we now move to hourly or daily. That's it. Correct. How to professionally navigate a slow communicating business. Uh, you're nice to them because they're a client and they're paying you. This part, this, this poor person, poor person was dealing with the fact that uh, their client wasn't responding fast enough. Your job is to communicate even in the urgency of post that you need to talk to somebody if you're in client services. If you want to piss off the client, let them walk, let them walk. Uh, I've also found, and I, Jeff, you uh, commented on here, and, and I like that you are suggesting that they be uh, um, more aggressive instead of just waiting. I'm also a big fan of using things like Calendly, so you can tie in your own calendar and send an email to them. I can meet when you're ready, because I'm sure you're busy, here's my calendar. And I find that then they can schedule without having to email you and say, are you available at these days? Are you available at these days? Just give them a calendar that ties into your calendar. A thousand percent. I'm very much of the belief, um, and it's a lot of people struggle with this, that everybody's busy. The pandemic has only amped that up. And I've never been wrong by being patient like that. I have been wrong by yelling at somebody because they didn't get back to me fast enough to find out that I was a triple 10 a-hole because they had some crisis in their life. And I felt ashamed about it. And I felt so ashamed that compassion is the way to, that I tend to approach those sort of things. PC guy, just bought a Mac. Good thing to know. There's great shit in this. Oh, I dropped the S-bomb. I was the first. There's great shit in this thread. Great set of tools. Michael, do you have a favorite tool in this thread at all? And you can take a moment and 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 see if see what, go ahead and mention it. Uh, like Adobe, like the Knights of the editing table. Knights of the editing table. Excalibur. It, it changes your, KY, your KYS file. Uh, so I think that will help immensely. And I think the biggest thing is to learn your modifier keys because at the bottom uh, of your keyboard, you're most likely using your thumbs to hit your command button, you know, your, your lower three buttons, and that will smack the Windows button if you're on a PC. So be aware of your modifier keys at the bottom of the keyboard. I, I go cross-platform all the time, but my brain is funny like that. Uh, I agree with you. I think the Knights of the Editing Table utility to convert keyboards is amazing. I was mentioning a tool they had that's phenomenal cross-platform for Premiere called Excalibur, which uses a keyboard switch and lets you type in a command of nearly anything in the Premiere interface. 
I'm a huge fan of, and, and I can talk to you about PC utilities as well as Mac, but I'm a huge fan of a utility called Alfred, which kind of like Spotlight invokes a window that lets you search, but it also lets you do workflows. So to give you an example, um, I all the time am doing things like opening up a specific directory. I'm all the time querying into a database to grab, grab information. Alfred is like my best friend. I'll give you another one that's huge with it is that it lets me grab a clipboard entry from five days ago, you know, and paste it because I know what yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm I'm writing that down. Yeah, okay. Because there's so many. I I have a, an eternally open Notepad app where I'm cutting and pasting things because I know I have to take this metadata and this metadata and copy it. Wow. That alone. Um. There are. Down. Yeah. It. Alfred's amazing, and it's obviously Alfred is as in Batman. Uh. There's a lot of great items in this thread. Totally worth checking out. I'd if I were you watching this, I would just click and open every link. Deep work tricks, basically, this person's got a big time show. They want to stay focused. Michael, how do you stay focused? I don't drink a lot the night before. Um, <laughs> that's that's a big one. Uh, obviously, I'm turning my phone off. I'm putting it in vibrate, uh, putting it in the other room if possible. Uh, I know some folks will go to the Pomodoro method. I've never been a fan of that. I've been a fan of when I finally sit down and start yeah, I'm, I'm just doing the, the long slog and I'm doing it for an hour or two. Um, I need to get up and walk around uh, to stay healthy, but uh, th th I just uh, eliminate distractions, including the phone, including going to social media. So I create groups on tabs and Chrome and so I can collapse it. So I'm not tempted to go in there. Uh, that's, that's how I do it. How do you stay off Reddit is my question. I don't. Uh, every time I take a break, I'm just taking a quick look, but that's that moderator anxiety, probably a procrastination. I do use the Pomodoro method. I find that when I sit down at my desk first thing in the morning, I'm giving myself a, a kind of a mini Pomodoro, a 10 minute like, okay, you can goof off. But when this goes off, organize your day and then start churning out the things you need to get done. I also blissfully start to feel guilty when I end up doing something too long in the wrong space. But like us all, it's a question of project management and deadlines that you stay focused. Um, there's a lot of people who complain about having a variety of repetitive stress injuries. These free, they, they, a lot of the tools out there, software tools, give you a frequent reminder, hey, stretch your hands out a little, stand up a little, change your vision. And I found that running them the first time was super crazy annoying. And then I gave it a week. And aside from that, the fact that I felt better, every time I was forced to take a break, I would take a couple breaths in and said, am I still on task for what I need to be? And it really, really helped. So in the same fact that these tools were really breaking my initial focus, because they were micro breaks, like only eight seconds, 15 seconds. They actually helped keep me on task as well as getting me to be a little bit healthier. Yeah, I'm going to, not that I want to drag out this drive by, but maybe you can explain uh, how the Pomodoro system works for you. Because uh, my wife, for example, my partner, she will uh, put the clock in her car ahead 10 minutes. And that helps her. Oh. That's 10 minutes fast. So it doesn't work because I know what you're doing. I, I know how it's made. I, I, I know what you're attempting to do. So when I set a, uh, an alarm to go off for the, pom for the Pomodoro method, um, it goes off and so that's arbitrary. It's totally, you know, that, it's that's totally, always been the mind that I can't get around. It's totally arbitrary. They're all arbitrary yeah. systems. The concept is, hey, for this 25 minutes, I need to be working on this task. That's it. Anything else is off task. And when it goes off, the first the first three, four Pomodoros you ever do, Michael, you're beautifully on task because it's a change to your life. And you go, oh, yeah, in the same way that, like, I'm going to start working out and the first couple workouts are easy. Six weeks in, most people fall off the horse because life intrudes. 
what starts to happen is you start to be aware that you're not on the task you're supposed to be on with Pomodoro, and you realize you're not getting the things accomplished you want to get accomplished. I'm sure, like like you, like all of us, I've got a hundred things I'm juggling, but I got to get these done today. And the only way I'm going to make sure I get that carved out space is that I do this portion of it. And sometimes they're bottomless holes. Sometimes I think it's only going to take 90 minutes and it takes 900 minutes. And that's my lack of ability to ascertain the work I need to get done. But I find that starting my day, those pieces of focus help me get the rock move just a little bit further downhill. And that's all I'm doing. I'm not carrying the baggage of when I succeed or fail. It's just a technique like your wife uses. And it, you're right. My wife does the same thing, by the way. It's five minutes fast, the clock in the car. I just go, oh, I'll leave five minutes early. If it helps her succeed, who am I to say it's wrong? The Greenberg Zen. Trying to be, man. Trying to be. <laughs> Speaking of Zen, let's get to our second to last item. Editing resolve in Hollywood. Is anyone do it doing it? Yeah. No. No, no. Uh, sure, like maybe one British. Is anybody cutting in Final Cut? No. Michael, I think you say this very, very well. Uh, this thread is is fantastic uh, because there's people who are like, I've been in Hollywood for X amount of years and I've never heard of it. Okay. Um, so here's, here's the truth. And I have no allegiances. Uh, I've, I've worked with them all. I've worked with all the companies on a corporate level on a, a creator level. The fact is that for broadcast feature film, uh, in Hollywood and LA, uh, excuse me, uh, LA, Hollywood and uh, New York, it's avid. Uh, it's going to be avid. That's not going to change anytime soon. Because uh, after the, all you win an Oscar, you're going to use the, you're going to keep on the horse that got you to win the race. And and for what it's worth, unfortunately, if they need to take you out of that puzzle, they know exactly what they're dealing with at every level. And, and the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up, because the question was about resolve, but you need to know why it isn't where you think it is. Um, these facilities are built around Avid workflow, Avid hardware, the talent, the editors know Avid, and the clients come back because they like the work that the uh, editors and producing team does. Uh, we then move into the, in the great minority, or we're talking Adobe, we're talking Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, and uh, utilizing that for uh, an occasional, or, well, some television shows definitely, but uh, mainly cable, uh, mainly VOD, uh, secondary tier. Uh, we then get to Final Cut and, and Resolve, which are by far in, in the minority, and those are usually independents, uh, uh, independent, unscripted, that kind of thing. Where you will see resolve is in color grading, and that's been that's taken the the post industry by storm over the past decade or so. Your uh, resolve has a huge part in grading and onlining, uh, uh, but in terms of it being an editor, it's almost next to none. It it actually um, is phenomenal for creating transcodes. It's phenomenal for dailies along those lines, and it's also phenomenal for lower cost DIT. And I say lower cost because it has the ability to copy with a checksum. It just can't produce a PDF that's assured the way some of the other tools do in the market. Uh, but Resolve gets used every day. It gets used heavily around Netflix finishing. But the core set of story editors in New York, LA, who are working this sort of high profile, they're very, very comfortable about their speed and delivery in Avid, and I don't see that changing anytime fast. I don't think it's but good. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's a bad. I can teach anybody how to work better and smarter with any of these tools, but there's some fine nuanced pieces that leave people very comfortable around Media Composer. I, I like what you said a moment ago. It's not good. It's not bad. Just because Resolve isn't used by 99% of the people out there doesn't make it bad right? Avid has just been around for so long, and it's in the DNA of uh, uh, and the workflows and money spent on it. Uh, is it the best? There is no best. It's a gray area, but you want the reality of it, no pun intended. Resolve does not have the editing client base 
in LA or New York for broadcast uh, or feature film. I I actually have the flair on my user. I love your favorite NLE. And the truth is, is I love and hate them all. They all have let me down. They have all succeeded beyond my wildest beliefs at, at times. Uh, you know, I they're great tools. I think the answer here, though, is probably there will be a breakout star sometime the next year for actual feature length piece, the same way there was a cold mountain, the same way that for Final Cut, classic the way there was focus for final cut 10 the way dare uh, not daredevil um deadpool deadpool was the big and gone girl was big for premiere mm -hmm. and then Term uh, terminator dark fate uh and a bunch of others uh cohen brothers did one hail caesar that was in uh, premiere uh but uh neo vision actually in this post threw out something which i'm thinking this person may have some insider info uh if you sort by do uh, NeoVision says, uh, I talked to a post veteran once and, uh, he said, yes, a production on site with 24 hour support by the developing team and enough money. And they'll export the assembled timeline from Avid to Premiere and trim the final base like graded result. The, 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 the joke about that is that, yeah, there are some companies that have said, look, we'll give you 24 seven support. We'll give you free licenses. We'll partner with a storage company who will give you uh, uh, storage volumes and arrays that that cost tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. And we'll do it all free as long as you edit this program on our software and then we can market it, which I get. It makes complete sense. But those are the kind of things that have to happen to get things to change uh, 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 out in the industry. One of the interesting parts is, is that the amount of support Apple used to, I don't know if they still do, but they, they used to lean hard and heavy into if a key production was using, they, they provided engineers and they provided support services and Adobe does the same thing. And I cannot imagine anywhere on the planet that Blackmagic, who's got an office in Burbank, isn't doing exactly the same thing hoping that a nominated film turns around and says, well, we cut it all in Resolve and we, we never left the software. I mean, that, and, and then they'll have their little check mark and everybody goes back to whatever they're doing. And in fact, I said, if, if Black Magic is, and you, you made this great reply, this will be a great place to wrap this, by the way. And if they are cutting it in Resolve, I'm 100% sure Black Magic will put it on their homepage. And you pointed out if they're allowed to, of course, if they're allowed to. And that brings us to FMK. And it's up to you to go Google what that means. Of course, as we do this, we'd love for you to comment about what you would like to see us talk about next time. Uh, Mr. Thomas, FMK, let's start off with the K. What would you, which one would you oh, like wait, to, yeah. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. It's, we have to do F first, M oh, second. Then let's third. do it that way and I'm not cutting away. F I'm gonna just keep it here. <laughs> which one do you wanna F? <laughs> well, uh, I'm gonna F A A F, but it's gonna be a creepy F because I'm the whole time I'm, I'm gonna be saying you're so better than OMF, you're so better than OMF and it's gonna be creepy for everyone, but uh, F is going to be AAF. I, I definitely agree with you. F is AAF. I will tell you in theory, it's supposed to be a much more open architecture that improves. Because, uh, as we go, I'm going to do M, I'm going to M XML, but I'm only going to do M XML because it seems to work generally better than AAF does. And I really wish AAF, it, it seems to me nobody really wants their uh, projects to be able to be opened by somebody else. The machinations around it fall into XML territory. What about you? I'm gonna marry XML, but it's gonna be polyamory because XML has so many different variants and schemas. It's gonna be an open marriage, I, I have no doubt. So yeah, going. so if you do marry it, you have to know going in, there's gonna be a lot of variants and you gotta be okay with that. Wow, wow. I think we're both gonna, K uh, EDL. It, it, what is it? Is that like a 1980s technology? It's the CMX 3600, which I think was Grass Valley, and it it is the base level cuts only one track of video timeline. Okay. For the record, number one, uh, one 
There's like nine different EDLs, but the one we see the most is the CMX Switcher 3600. Right. Two, I believe it happens to actually be two tracks of video, four tracks of audio. I stand corrected. I'm, I'm, I've used it and I still, I use it actually to this day because if you go to take a finished ProRes 4x4 out or ProRes HQ out of whatever tool over to Resolve's, Resolve is a really nice cut detection feature, but it works so much better as a colorist if you can give me an EDL so I can have it slice the timeline 100% correctly. Wow. FMK. Wow. So are we in agreement? Over yeah, totally in agreement. Totally in agreement. We are going to need to find one that you and I disagree on. I think, though, it's fine for us to agree. It. Of course, the whole idea is that this is partially a conversation and that the post, the, the Reddit post that's going to occur with this, we hope we hear people's opinions on this as well. We'll do that. Uh, any last words and where can they find you, my friend? They can find me, uh, at Michael Thomas. Uh, uh they can find me, uh, just about anywhere on the interwebs. Uh, you can also go to michaelcommas.com and five things series.com. And of course on the editor's sub, I am AV guru one and I wish I could change it, but here we are. Uh, outstanding. Uh, I'm Jeff Greenberg. Uh, I'm film geek nearly on all your favorite social networks. I do education and consulting around this stuff. I'm Greenies Mac, and I happen to be, for better or worse, the lead moderator here. I clearly over moderate, but uh, it's a fun, great community, and it's made up of people like you watching and like my friend here, Michael. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, hope you see us next week or so. We still haven't figured out with our lives what our regular, irregular schedule will be. But this is the first one that I'm going to not say the word pilot on. I'm going to call this episode one of uh, season one. How's that sound, my friend? I dig it. Yeah. Uh, and it was a joy. You are, as always, a wonderful compatriot and foil. I wish you and everybody watching a wonderful day and hope your families and are, are all well and happy. Take care, everyone.